Oh, to Nelson for that beautiful word in prayer. Thank you so much to oh, to Michael Gregory for leading us uh, through our testimonies and prayer requests. And we know that God hears us. And so we know we can come to the throne of grace knowing that we will receive what we need. And uh, we just praise the Lord for for that. We're looking at the word tonight, uh, looking at the first, the first division of Psalm, first division of Psalm. And it's very familiar to many of us. Um, so I'll go ahead and read it. It says, blessed is the man or woman who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, my version says nor stands in the uh, way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night and he or she is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither in all that he or she does it prospers we're going to use the title tonight living the blessed life living the blessed life the the writer of this psalm is dealing with an issue that many of us uh, try to figure out. How is one to live a life for God in a world that we live in? As we look around our world, there is so many things going on. There's so much foolishness. There's so many different things pulling on us. All we have to do is turn on the news or just walk in a grocery store to be exposed to some kind of foolishness. And and, and you know the rule is the, the more you're connected with, the more, uh, the w whatever place you stay, whatever uh, situation you allow to come into your mind, those are the things that we are going to, 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 uh, to, to portray. I had a teacher when I was in school who used to say all the time, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, and, and so what, how, how are we to live the blessed life as children of the Most High God? And, and, and it seems like this psalmist is answering that question. Uh, the psalmist says, uh, the person who is blessed by God, and he, he first starts in a negative way. We usually try to try to start with the positives instead of the negatives, but he starts with the negatives because obviously these influences are so strong. He says, blessed is, is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, uh, is not listening to things from people who we know are, are not of a good uh, report doesn't stand in the way of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of the scoffers. Notice this progression here. It, it, he, he says they, they don't walk, they don't stand, and they don't sit. Notice that when, when you're walking, you're moving. You're moving past something. is is not necessarily a comfortable thing. You're not really staying with something. Uh, but then the standing is more of a set position, but 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 you're still not yet you know if you're sitting if you're standing and waiting on something that's not a comfortable position to be in but this person ends up sitting a, a comfortable position in sin basically and and the 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 psalmist is saying that is not what God is calling his people to be that is not living the blessed life instead the way to live the blessed life he, he says, here we go. The, the way to live the blessed life 
It's not because some favor fell on you. It's not because you, you, you said hallelujah a few extra times. It's not because of some something that you just happened to happen to you. No, no, no. It says this individual is blessed because that person's delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, on God's law, he meditates day and night. No, notice he says this delight. And, and I, I looked up that word because it seemed kind of like, what does it mean, delight? And, 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 and when you look up the word, you kind of see the connotations, the, kind of the, the, the author is trying to get us to think of a surrendered mentality. Uh, uh, not not necessarily that 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 is something that you already like or something that you already care about, but because of our love for God, because of our our esteem for our Father, because of, of the fact that we see how much He's done for us, yea, given His very life for us, and and is preparing a place for us. Because of that, our delight is in to hear His. His words, because that's really what the law of God is, is instruction to, to hear what he has to say. Uh, when this psalm was written, there was no Bible as we have it today. There, there was the law of God and the law of God was the first five books of the Bible. So so that was the Bible that this particular psalmist had. And so he's saying, my delight is to spend time in the word of God. That my, my delight is, is is to hear the beautiful messages that God has for me. I, I've experienced his love and because of how much he loves me, it's not that I enjoy law. Who who really enjoys rules? I, I mean, who enjoys when when, the, when when you're going down the street and, and you're going 55 and you look up and it says 40 miles per hour? Who enjoys decelerating? You know, uh, who, who enjoys when you're going through a school zone and it says 15 and, and you're late for work? Who, who enjoys rules? You know, it, it, God's not saying to enjoy rules. Uh, rules because in ourselves, the second you make a rule out of something, it, it, there brings some kind of a resistance to it. But God is saying, I, I love my instruction, love what I say because you love me, because you love me, because you care for me, because you know who I am. Delight in my law, and, and this individual has a delight not because it's innate, but because it's surrendered. We've surrendered to God, and, and and what we said, whatever you say, God, I'm good with it. And so the delight is to be able to 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 be in God's law and, and to and to and to enjoy His instruction for our lives. And it's not just a I enjoy it one day a week. Notice it says His on this law. Not He doesn't just love it. He doesn't just delight in it. He's not just surrendered to it, but on this law. He meditates day and night. He spends some time in the Word. He's thinking about it, or she's thinking about it. It's something that that's constantly on this person's mind. This individual is so in love with the living God that that night and day they're engulfed in the Word of God. Now, notice it may not be saying, "Hey, you're carrying a Bible around, and and and, and even while you're while you're driving, you got your Bible up halfway on the steering wheel, trying to try to drive and and read the word." No, 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 no. It's saying I'm I'm constantly in this conversation with God, almost like you know people used to all the time. You 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 would see them wear Bluetooth speakers in their ear, and they, and they'd be talking, and you think they're crazy because they're just talking. But but then you, you realize no they're actually talking on the phone they got they got a speaker in their ear and, and, and it's on and they're talking to somebody and that that's kind of the relationship God wants for us to have just have have our our, our, our antenna up have have our, our our openness to the heavens so that God can continue to download and we can continue to have that conversation all day and all the time and and when it says day and night there's really no other time except for day or night right there's it's either if you say a time it's either day or or it's night so it's meaning all the time we are engulfed in this relationship with God it's our delight and we know it's God's delight as well this person who meditates on God day and night the Bible says that person, this individual, is like a tree 
planted by streams of water. And, and, and we, when you hear that, you, you, you see that, notice that the, 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 the tree is not damming up the water. It, it's not a tree that's, that's taking all the water. It, it, the tree is planted by the streams of water. So uh, if you know anything about uh, uh, things that are planted by the water, they are they have rich soil around them. They, 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 they are enriched and they and they have everything they need and, and, and they're constantly being filled by the water. But they're not the only ones being filled by the water. The tree is not the only thing that's getting uh, drenched. It's not the only thing getting fed. Uh, they also, something go that uh, as the water passes by the tree, the tree gives the water some more nutrients and the things downstream continue to get fed too. And so a lot of times we see uh, our religion and, and, and our time with God as our only individual thing. But as we are being fed by God, we're also flowing to others the the water is flowing through off of us the overflow is coming to everybody around us and and everyone around us is blessed as a result of our relationship our reaching up to god god would have for us to be that 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 water that everyone in our neighborhood is thirsting for so that God can download it through us and, and everybody be fed and everybody say, oh man, what is going on with this individual? How can I have what you have? Planted by streams of water. The it yields its fruit in its season and its wheat leaf does not wither. You notice that it, when it says this, it yields its fruit, it doesn't say it just yields fruit immediately. See, a lot of times we think we, we want fruit when we want fruit. You know, a lot of times we want it at a particular time. I need it now. But notice it's not, the, the tree does not control the fruit. The, tr the fruit comes when God is ready for it to come. It, it's not an immediate thing. No, no tree bears fruit uh, uh, when the seed is planted. But as it's watered, as it grows, and in its season, when God is ready for it to produce, then it produces. It's not producing on command. It's not immediate. It's in its season. And, and, and beloved, maybe you wish God would do something in this season for you. Maybe you wish God was would uh, uh, produce something through you in this season. And God, it just, it, you, your leaves are nice and green, uh, but, but there's nothing that's being produced. And God is maybe just saying, hold on. Hold on to the season comes. When the season comes, then I will produce something through you. When the season comes, you are going to be the blessing. Even now you're a blessing because you're green and, and, and water's passing through you. But 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 you're going to be the blessing that I've been creating you to be in your season, but only in your season is going to come. God is trying to get God, his people to get into this mentality where meditating on him, where being connected with him is all there ever really is. Notice if if you connect with God day and night, what else do you have to connect with? <laughs> if you're constantly bathing yourself in this meditation on God, then we have no other things to bring our distractions away. Now, of course, it's not saying we need to, to do this instead of everything else that God has called us to do. But this is the driving force is what God is trying to reveal to his people. This is where we get our strength. This is where we get our power. This is where we get our witness. And God is trying to call his people, beloved, to this strong relationship with him that is so powerful that it reverberates all around and others see him through us. God, y'all know Jesus is coming really soon. And, and, and one of the things that God would have for his people to be is witnesses for him. And the way we, we can only witness for him by relate, relating to him on a daily basis, on a constant basis, allowing him to move through us. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge everybody under the sound of my voice to remain in constant daily meditation on the Word of God. Const have that constant communication with God. I guarantee you, God is going to do an amazing thing in season. He's going to do an, an awesome thing through you. Um, he, he's going to share you
with others. He's going to share himself with others through you. I mean, uh, but God is calling us to this deep relationship. And if you would accept, if you would choose it, uh, you would see God produce amazing fruit and do amazing things through you. God, thank you so much for the promises that you have given us. Uh, we're, we're so grateful for you uh, touching us, for you desiring to be in relationship with us, desiring to be close to us. Forgive us for the times when we don't really desire to be close to you. It's our flesh, it's, it's in us, and, and the thing we want to do, a lot of times we don't do. But God, give us a desire to want to be with you, to reach up to you, to, to gain a strength and courage and, and, and power. May we constantly come to you for that, not anywhere else, not to, to the world or to any other situation, but gain our strength and our courage and our power from the living God so that others can hear your voice and be prepared as we will be uh, for your second coming, which is oh so soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.